Cord. Okay. All right. How are you doing, Melody? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing well. Um, sorry, I uh kept you waiting. Um, I just got back from work and I didn't realize that I overslept. But oh, oh, don't don't worry, don't worry. I just thought that I uh, uh mistaken with the, with the with the hour with the timing, but it's correct. So. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry. But thank. It's a pleasure to. Oh yes, it's a pleasure to meet you too. Um, but yeah. thankfully, um, next week I'm a, I have a full week of vacation. Wow! Wow! So you can have a good rest. Oh, for sure. Um... <laughs> are you staying there or are you traveling somewhere in the world? for I'm, your vacation i'm going to um sh i'm going to a day in um chicago wow wow all right um anyway um question one what was it like growing up in italy well it was uh wonderful of course because italy is a beautiful place a beautiful country we have a lot of history a lot of good food uh, and a lot of good music, of course. Uh, I have to say that probably living here made me lose some chances uh, thinking about music, probably, because uh, uh, in Italy, music is appreciated, but not so appreciated as regard the music business. So to be a musician uh, as a job here in Italy is not so easy. That's it. Oh, uh, indeed, like I've seen the pictures of Italy because it always looked beautiful and it's definitely a place on my uh, bucket list to travel. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> All right, question two. Um, When did the music bug bite you? When I was very, very young because my family is made by musicians too. My mom was a singer. My dad was a, a quite important songwriter here in Italy. He wrote many songs for big artists, uh, Italian artists, of course, such as uh, uh, Mina. I don't know if you know them, of course, because maybe they're not famous there, but maybe Raffaella Carrà. Do you know her? Uh, she was a, a very popular soubrette here in Italy, but she departed some a few months ago. Uh, well, so my dad was a, a big songwriter, so music was in my life since I was a child. And uh, no question about what would have been my job in the, when, when I grew up. So uh, I, I always loved it. Um, fascinating story, and yeah, like, um, <laughs> those are, um, all new, and, um, I've, um, been listening and getting into Italo, um, disco, hence why, um, some of those names are, um, really familiar. Yeah, Italo disco, yeah, yeah, I, I sang so many songs for Italo disco, you know. Um, and and many of them have been great hits, uh, such as uh, Inside to Outside, and the project was Lady Violet, or Talk to Me, the project was Dear. I know that in Brazil uh, there is this project Radio Rama that is very famous, and I sang many songs for that project too. So um, I have to say that I, I am quite popular as a, as a singer as regard Eurobeat here in Italy. And I'm, I'm making a lot of live shows. I, I've been on tour for the last two years. I'm still on tour. And it's incredible how much people still love the 90s and Eurobeat, uh, Italo dance songs, and also Eurobeat songs, of course. Um, yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> question three, um, what shaped your taste in music? 
Uh, I, I've always been um, a, a, a music lover, uh, uh, but not thinking about just one style or one singer. I've always listened to everything. And my family taught me that, of course. So uh, I, I like uh, uh, song songwriters. I like pop music. I like dance music, rock music. I'm very fond in rock. To be honest, I am a rock girl, a rock and roll girl. But uh, uh, I've always listened to everything because I think that if this music is made in the right way, if a song is a good song, it can be uh, uh, in every style. You, you so I, I listened to many many. Uh, artists and so much music so there is not a particular um, genre that I like the most uh, I, I think that just the good songs and uh, the good music uh, is, uh, is, is the answer <laughs> yeah great answer I'm definitely the um, same way because um as I evolve and mature, um, I start liking everything. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's a, it's quite, I think, silly to think that you can listen just for one artist or one kind of music or one style, because uh, music is everywhere and there are beautiful songs in, in every style, in every kind of music. So we, we are on the same... Uh, vibe in this on the same path indeed um question four who influenced your style of singing and vocal range because it's pretty incredible <laughs> no it's not so incredible uh, i've always loved uh, soul singers uh, so i started listening when i was uh, young and, and i was learning to sing i started listening to Aretha Franklin, uh, Etta James, uh, and then with the Houston, so soul singers. And I have to say that uh, also uh, after I, 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 I can say that I love those kind of voices. Uh, as regard my range, vocal range, you have to know that uh, you learn to sing from the... the the bottom of your voice uh, until uh, those eye notes uh, so it, it's not so incredible many singers can do that and uh, what i can say is that i have uh, uh, a voice that can uh, uh, change if i want so sometimes the producers ask me to change my voice my intention the quality of my voice to sound a little more childish maybe or soulful, or warm, and so I can change my voice <laughs> uh, depending on what my producers ask and what the song is and the, the style is, of course. And then I, I, I have also to say that in many songs, in particular as yes, regard Eurobeat, uh, there is a trick. When you record those songs, you record them uh, a little uh, down so they pitch the song a little down a little bit down so you you're not singing those incredibly high notes and after they pitch everything up so all the vocals sounds even more thin and high so uh, this is a trick that all the producers use as regard Eurobeat songs of course <laughs> A great answer. It um, yeah, like, yeah, like um, I really um do like um, the um, way you sound because you have such a unique voice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. You can hear that when I when I talk, my voice is quite big uh, and low, but. Uh, I I can sing so high if if requested I can sing not talk so high but sing yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Question five. Um. Were you ever into dance music? 
Well, not really. I have to say that when I was a teenager, of course, I liked to go with my friends to the disco and dance and listen to disco music songs. Uh, but uh, to be honest, uh, at that time, uh, I also have my, I had my band, rock band. So I was more in rock and roll than than dance music. I uh, admit that in the latest year, I'm in uh, dance music. Uh, I like to listen to it. I like to produce it. I like to uh, uh, get involved a, a little much more than before. But uh, um, to be honest, it, it has never been my, my first love, uh, dance music. It's very amusing uh, to, 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 to sing it uh, and uh, to listen to it. But my favorite kind of music is rock or soul music so uh, not, not a huge fan and i know i'm disappointing <laughs> in this answer <laughs> no it's better to be honest <laughs> than to lie <laughs> yes yes i agree <laughs> all right um question um six how and when did you get involved in the dance music scene I was very young. I told you that when I was a teenager, about 15, 16 years old, I went to the disco. But that was also the time when I started singing disco music because uh, at the time I, I, I was uh, uh, singing, recording a song in a studio, in a recording studio that was a pop song in Italian, so nothing to do with the dance music. And uh, a dance producer, Stefano Colombo, entered the studio. He worked at the time for Digit International, that was a very important label for dance music here in Italy. And they listened to my voice and asked me if I wanted to uh, try to sing dance music. And I, of course, asked, uh, answered, yes, why not? <laughs> let's, let's try this. Uh, so everything started there because I was uh, called in a recording studio some days after and I had to sing a famous cover of the song uh, Sweet Dreams by La Bouche. Uh, it was uh, 1990, uh, I think, three or four, uh, the same year that the song was released, the, the original song was released because that was a... Uh, uh, we we call we call them in Italy cover tarocco. Uh, it means that they sound exactly like the, the original, but they're not the original. Uh, and uh, that song that cover went so well that from there I, I I started my dance career. So producers and DJs started to call me uh, every week to sing their songs, their productions, and uh, I never stopped. Uh, uh, I am still one of the most requested singers for dance music. Amazing um story. <laughs> All right. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Um question um seven. Favorite <laughs> Italian nightclub. <laughs> Uh, it's hard because I never, I, I never been uh, so so often in, in nightclubs uh, for pleasure. But I have to say that my favorite nightclub is Alcatraz. That is a nightclub in Milan, and it uh, it is a, a discotheque, but not also not, not not only a discotheque. They they also um, have live concerts. Uh, they they have a different kind of uh, evenings and, and, uh, and parties during the week so uh, maybe that's the reason why I like it so much because you can go there and find many kind of music and many kind of people also so Alcatraz yes oh, um, great um, answer and yeah that definitely sounds like a good time yeah <laughs> yeah we are we are on on uh on the uh now we are coming to the moment when we start talking about cypher i see <laughs> i have your questions there because i i wanted to be prepared 
So uh, the, 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 uh, the, the question is how did I get involved with the Siphon Group? That's correct, yeah. Yep. Uh, everything started about 2001. And I, I was coming from uh, uh, a series of dance seats that, had, that, that, that uh, were huge successes all over the world, uh, all over Europe. Uh, I'm talking about Lady Violet and Dear and Adam with Zombie. So uh, in 1999, uh, many producers called me because they thought that, that, they, that I was... Uh, their lucky chance uh, to make uh, a big hit. I sang so many songs at that time in that year. And in uh, 2001, I sent a demo of mine with my hits and uh, something else to the Siphon Group because I wanted to go on with, uh, with dance music and to sing in, in uh, recording studios. And uh, here in Italy, the dance scene was uh, slowly uh, going down. So things were not uh, as uh, beautiful as in the past uh, years, in the 90s, of course. So when I sent my demo to Ma and the Siphon Group, he called me back immediately. And uh, he asked me to go there to meet him and to start uh, singing for him. And uh, of course, I accepted. And the first time that I was uh, there, I can clearly remember that I uh, sang a cover again by Cristina Aguilera. And the song was Genie in a Bottle. And uh, that was my, so, uh, how, how can I say, a test. Uh, they, they wanted to see if I was able to sing uh, exactly as Christina in that song, and I made it. Uh, so, <laughs> so they said, uh, yes, okay, okay, we are going to work together a lot. And, uh, and it was uh, exactly that. I started working for them a lot, singing for, the, for them every week, uh, sometimes I, I went to the studio with Mauro and uh, Fabio Serra and Johnny and uh, the other producers that worked there. And I sang 10, 12, 20 songs a day. Uh, it was incredible. And uh, this, uh, this went on for years uh, until uh, 2007, 2008. Every week I was there and we, we produced many, 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 many songs. So many songs, too many songs. <laughs> Amazing story. And um, question, <laughs> question nine, what was it like working with Mauro Farina? Mauro is a very funny person, a huge professional, of course, uh, and it's very funny to work with him uh, because, you know, uh, uh, making music is always fun. Um, you, you, you know what you have to do because you have uh, already the song, the song has already, be, already been composed, but when you're in the studio with Mauro, creativity uh, always comes up from nothing so you start singing what you wrote uh, but you finish doing also other things that came to mind that come to mind uh, from nothing so so it, it's very funny and stimulating that Mauro is a great professional a great singer a great composer so it's always fun 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 amazing uh, answer um <laughs> Question 10. Tell me more about the term being a turnista because you told me in the email yeah. that, you, that um, you, don't <laughs> remember, you. you don't remember certain <laughs> songs because you were a turnista. Yeah, thank you so much for changing this list of questions I could not answer to. Yes, uh, to be a turnist mean, means that you go there, you sing, you put your creativity, your voice uh, in the production, but then you know nothing about uh, what will happen to those songs you, you sang. 
And, and this is what happened with Mauro. I know now that many of the songs that I sang at that time have become huge successes, that some of them have been put in uh, Dance Dance Revolution, uh, that uh, have become so uh, incredibly popular. Uh, I'm now watching to the questions that you sent me and you are talking about uh, uh, Wild Side or the song My Sweet Darling or uh, Jenny Rome. I can't remember anything <laughs> because when I went there, I told, as I told you, when I went in the studio with Mauro at Saifa, sometimes Mauro was not there. Sometimes there were there was another producer, of course. I uh, I went there and I have to sing the songs that I didn't know. Of course, I I went there. I listened to. You okay? uh, we got some mail here. Uh, I went there. I I listened to the demo song. I learned it there and then I sang following the instructions of Mauro or Fabio or, or the producer of the moment and uh, I didn't know the artist so the name of the project so Gianni Rome no I, I don't know I don't know I, I simply sang a song uh, and uh, so uh, I, I can't answer just because I I, I was not informed about the future of the songs I sang. And of course, I'm very, very proud now to know that all these songs uh, I sang have, have become so great and uh, popular. But uh, uh, to be a tourist is, is a means to, to, to do your job, to sing fundamentally and not to ask nothing else. Just do your job, do it well, and uh, nothing else, nothing more. Since you don't give your image, your face to a project, you just give your voice, you, you can't pretend to know or to be involved in the future of the production. That's it. And I know it sounds a little bit sad, but it's not. It, it, it is part of my job. And uh, you know after that you have been a good job because people love you, what you sang. So that's okay. This is my satisfaction. This is my repayment uh, for the job, of course. Yeah, interesting um, process. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not the only one, of course, because many, many productions, not just uh, with Mauro, but uh, with, with all the producers in the 90s uh, worked this way. And so not just me, but all the other singers that were tourists that didn't give their image, they, their face to the project. And also because uh, uh, you have to know that there aren't so many singers, or better, not so many good singers, singers that can do almost everything, that can change their voice, that can uh, uh, transform their uh, character and their style for different particular styles and projects and also uh, countries, because you know that there are many, many Start music styles in the dance music uh, and uh, styles that are uh, particularly for, for, for example, for Japan, Eurobeat, or for uh, other, other countries. They have other sounds, uh, other constructions. Uh, the songs sound different. So uh, we are not so many. And you can't give your face to all the production, productions you see of course because uh, it, it is absurd uh, so they change the name they change the project they change sometimes the face of the project that is maybe a supermodel or a dancer or a, a cute girl <laughs> that's okay but then the voice comes from me or for from other singers other tourists great um Great um information. <laughs> All right. Um question um eleven. Um 
Do you remember Morrow or anyone from Syphem telling you about the Jenny Rom content? Because it came out when the internet was um was on the rise and it was ahead of its its time because now people tend to find love on the internet. Yeah, uh so I I uh, Jenny Rom, I didn't know. Uh, anything about that name i have to be honest i uh, recently discovered a site called parapara wiki that contains if you go into parapara wiki you can find all the singers uh, you know of course you know perfectly and uh i i searched melody castellari and i see uh a lot of uh, of names related to my name, so uh, a lot of nicknames. Johnny Rome too. Uh, Siphon didn't tell me anything about that, but uh, it's true. Now many fans, many many people uh, that is involved that like uh, this kind of music and those songs know more than than I know. <laughs> so sometimes you, you uh, there are fans that write to me uh, through the socials most of all or in, in, via email and uh, uh, send me links uh, YouTube links to songs and and ask me uh, is it you <laughs> is it you singing this song so I go there I don't remember absolutely the song but I can recognize my voice. And it's uh, funny because I, I say, ah, oh, yes, I sang this song. Yes, I can't remember when or where, but it's me. Uh, so Jenny Rom is one of the case, uh, cases. I, I, I cannot remember the song or the name, but yeah, it's definitely me. Uh, not only me, because uh, Jenny Rom has uh, many voices. Uh, it's one of those projects projects where uh, there is not just one singer so there is me and other singers that sang songs for that project uh, great answer <laughs> and um yeah like in the same game dance dance revolution extreme there's a cover by the siphon group we are the champions <laughs> by queen and i'm listening uh, listening to i was like I can tell that's you. I'm not sure if you remember singing that cover, but I can definitely tell it's you because of the voice. Because I listen. <laughs> so now you see. Now you recognize me, and because you are particularly sensible, probably, and you can recognize my voice because you have listened to my voice in so many songs, and you can understand where where is my voice when I change it but you can still feel my sign I guess <laughs> yep and um because I listened to watched a compilation of your hits on um YouTube with um Lady mm -hmm. Violet and stuff yeah and then I yep. more like I recognized that voice that's why I could tell that the Wild Side songs were definitely you, not only because <laughs> it was credited. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and also, I have to say that probably some uh, someone in Saifam, I don't know who, I doubt is Mauro, but I think it's one of the producers with the, whom I worked at the time. Um wrote or or yes wrote probably on the internet that the vocals of those projects are are, are mine uh, if you go to on these cogs uh, of course you you see a lot of uh, a lot of songs uh, with my credits uh, but i didn't sign my name uh, to be credited you can recognize my voice so no one at, the, at that time had to know that it was me, okay? Because uh, there are uh, there were other names uh, such as Johnny Roma or, or other or the Violet, for example, and so someone probably someone uh, uh, working for Siphon, the Siphon Group, or the others the labels for uh, for which I I worked. Uh, 
revealed <laughs> that was me that was me uh, it would it would be nice from you if you can send me an email when you have time of course and not during your vacation because you have to rest but an email when you uh, put down the titles you think is it, my voice uh, because I, I still don't know all the songs that I sang I can't remember them I probably sang 1000 songs in my life in my career from 1993 until now so you know it's quite impossible to remember everything and also because I don't know the names the nicknames that was associated to my vocals uh, it would be so so great if you could uh, write me down <laughs> the songs you think uh, are, are sang by me <laughs> oh for sure i will most certainly do that I, thank um, you so much question 12 was it challenging singing in a certain key that mauro and fabio gave you for a certain song yeah, yeah, sometimes, yes. Yeah. Sometimes it was hard. Uh, but the, the nice thing is that you are in a recording studio, so you can repeat, re redo the same thing many, many times. You're not uh, obliged to do the, the, the right note, the right key, the center it uh, the first time. You have chances to do it and as I said before there is also this trick that sometimes in some songs the voice and the key sounds so high but the truth is that when you record it uh, the song is pitched down so you don't have to hit those high notes the notes are still high but not that high and after when you're done everything they pitch back the song higher so sometimes it was hard i have to, to say it because they they tend also to to compose songs so high too much high uh, but uh, but we we could do it uh, every time so well <laughs> we made it Oh, yes, and gave um, us a lot of memorable music. And yeah, like dance music tends to have a lot of high keys because I interviewed Paula Terry and she said that um, Naoki always made her sing very high despite having a really low Australian accent because of the keys. <laughs> Hi, yeah, yeah. Probably it's true. It's true. Well, you have to uh, with, with this kind of music. Probably you have to uh, catch the people. Uh, also, also with with these powerful notes uh, and and high notes. So, but but uh, it's hard to sing. Yes, it's hard to sing uh, that high. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Question 13. How would you describe the differences between your singing and, and normal <laughs> speaking voice? I think you can hear it. The difference. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> very much uh, my voice uh, tends to be low, warm, a warm voice. Uh, I can sing, of course, uh, with my natural voice. So when I sing my own songs, my things, uh, or I, I sing a soul music or blues or also rock, I uh, have this big, uh, big, powerful, warm vocals voice. But uh, uh, for Eurobeat, for example, I have to sing in this way. So <laughs> high! <laughs> and... <laughs> and as I as I tried to explain uh, before, uh, there is no trick. Simply, I I, uh, I studied a lot, uh, so my I, I know how to use my voice. I know how to change my my um, my sign, my my qual quality of my voice, and uh, I I change following the requests and the needs of a specific style or song. 
a great answer and um yeah like i remember um when i um found your name from a youtube comment because it says the girl um that sings um for jenny ron they said that her voice is really deep so i looked up an interview of yours and i thought holy cow you have a <laughs> naturally low voice holy cow <laughs> yeah that's true that's true i know i know it's quite shocking for someone <laughs> but um that's why i enjoy interviewing the dance mania artists the most because of their interesting accents yeah mine uh, it's typically italian I, I, and i have also to uh, ask uh, Sorry if my English is not that person, uh, that perfect. You know, singing in English is a thing. Talking in English for me is completely different. Also, because here in Italy, I have not so many chances to talk with someone that speaks in English. So sometimes I say terrible things. I hope you understand me <laughs> and you will. Uh, uh you know accept the fact that i my english is not that incredibly perfect well your english <laughs> is um pretty um fluid and coherent to me ah, okay oh, thank you so much okay <laughs> question 14 what are some vocal exercises that you do i practice every day not hours, but uh, 10, 15 minutes a day. And uh, I simply do scales uh, and riffs. Uh, so, la 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 and goes on and so on. And I change sometimes maybe the syllab. So, mo mo mo, no no no, la la la, na na na. But my exercises are the typical singing exercises that you can find everywhere. <laughs> nothing strange, nothing particular. But the important thing is to do them every day. Great answer. And, um, question 15. Was it challenging singing in French? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, in French, in Spanish, in uh, Japanese, in Chinese. I, I sang songs in many languages that I don't know. Well, French, I know a little bit of French because I studied at school. But you, French, you know, French has, has this, uh, the yeah. R that is so difficult to me, always have been. Uh, and so, yes, it was challenging for, for the R, <laughs> most of all. Um, I knew already the accents, e, uh, e, 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 the closed E, or the open E, or the U, U. Uh, so I could pronunciate French correctly, but the, the R was terrible, always terrible. So, yes, it was challenging. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, I know that feeling because I watch anime and I've been wanting to get into learning um, Japanese and it's really difficult um, for me, but I keep trying. Yeah, you have to go on because uh, it's very fascinating, uh, but I, I never tried to learn it. I simply wrote down the sound of the words because when I have to when I had to sing in Japanese, for example, I simply wrote down the, the sound of the words, and I tried to to uh, to to have the good pronunciation, the correct pronunciation. I don't know what I what I said, <laughs> to be honest. Hopefully, something with a meaning. <laughs> For the Japanese. <laughs> oh, um, for sure. Um, question on um, sixteen. What is what is with dance music and all their aliases and nicknames? Sorry, can you repeat it, please? Uh, yeah, like dance music 
tends to have a lot of aliases and nicknames. Like, for example, yeah. um, Wild Side Jenny Rom and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're asking me why? Oh, yes. In yes, your opinion. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I know uh, perfectly why. Because... Uh, uh, music industry want, of, wants, of course, to release many, many productions and many, uh, many songs, maybe with different styles. So they have to find different names for all those uh, uh, productions. And uh, the, these nicknames usually are, are particular, are curious, uh, are that funny sometimes. Yeah. But well, that's because uh, they they have to create uh, some uh, uh, fantastic artists, uh, virtual artists. So this is the reason why I think I guess, and also uh, in 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 a way I answered before telling you that tourists are not so many. But there are many productions, so Melody can't be just Jenny Rome. She has to be also someone else, Radio Rama, Lady Violet, Adam, Amy, Jessica J, Noemi D. I have so many nicknames in my production, and the, the voice is always mine. So uh, they, had, they had to change and to create different nicknames. <laughs> A great um answer. Um question um seventeen. Have you ever heard your own song in a club or on the radio? Yeah, many times, many times. Uh, in, in the nineties, uh well in the nineties of course, but now too I listen to them uh, often. Uh, here in Italy, still there are uh, songs such as Inside to Outside by Lady Violet or Talk to Me by Dear or Zombie. I made this uh, uh, famous version, dance version of Zombie from the Cranberries in 1940, uh, in 1995, yes. And I can listen to them uh, often, often. Uh, so uh, in the 90s it was particular <laughs> it was, the sensation was strange because I I knew that it was me I could not tell that it was me singing those songs at that time uh, so my friends uh, when I when I say you know I, I sing this song it, it's me and they and they told me, nah, not true. This one is Lady Violet. Now nah, this one is uh, an, another nickname, but the voice, you know, was uh, mine. And uh, at that time, it was uh, weird. Yeah. Great. Um, the answer it. Um, tell me about your relationship with the amazing um dance um singer. Nathalie Arts. Yeah, we are we are friends. We are good friends. Uh, we know each other uh, since the nineties, of course. But I have to say that in these latest years, we've become more friends. She's a great girl. She's a great singer, artist, of course, but also a great person. So I love to be around her. We uh, telephone each other almost every day and we go on holiday together with Kim Lucas and Neja. <laughs> so we are four uh, good friends, uh, and good friends uh, that, uh, that love to be uh, together. Yes, I, I love her so much. Great answer. I wish I could have a relationship like that with someone and um can you please um <laughs> can you please hook me up with her with her um email and um and stuff like that because I've been trying to um interview her because she sang um great songs for 
dance that were used on Dance Dance Revolution also. And she seems really amazing in all the interviews I've seen her in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will give you uh, her email, of course. course. Awesome. (laughs) Question um, 21. What's your favorite dance move? Dance move or movie? Yeah. Dance, Dance move. move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a good dancer. Uh, uh, I I no, I really don't know. Uh, I I love. Uh, seeing people that can dance, uh, watching them. I dance. Uh, uh, not, not not a good dancer. I can keep the rhythm. Yes. Oh. Yeah, oh, as, yeah, as you're you, a dancer. Yeah, as you could tell, I went to the prestigious Carlton Dance Academy, so I could always oh, yeah. do a great Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can do that. Okay, I can. <laughs> so this is my favorite dance move. <laughs> yep, the Carlton. <laughs> That's my favorite great. dance move, too. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, question um twenty two. Which type of beats did you prefer singing over? Happy hardcore house, Euro beat, or techno? Uh house music is the one that gives you more freedom. I mean that you can improvisate, uh, make make things with your voice, and go go with the fantasy uh, but probably I find more uh, a music more funny Eurobeat yeah. Eurobeat yeah yeah it definitely the beats definitely sound fun fun to sing over yeah 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 <laughs> it's happy well, it sounds for happy sh- for sure i um... Question um twenty three. How did it feel for your songs with Moro and the Siphon Group to be included in the hit video game series Dance Dance Revolution? You told me. I didn't know that. So I'm feeling so proud and enthusiastic about it. Uh, well, it's incredible. Simply that uh, I, I I I I smiled at the moment that I read this uh, question. Huh? Really, <laughs> I thought really, no, my voice there. It, it has always been a dream of mine to be in uh, in the soundtrack of a video game. So, my dream come come true. <laughs> yep, and it did in a great way. <laughs> uh, question 25 how does it feel to have songs that still resonate with EDM fans and Dance Dance Revolution fans it's great it's great uh, uh, and uh, unbelievable uh, I mean uh, after 25 years uh, maybe a little more people still love that music uh, and when i when i uh, do my shows uh, i can see thousands of people dancing singing and, and not also no, not just people of my age because you know uh, of course uh, uh, people of my age remember those times when we were, were young uh, and, and uh, many uh, uh, remember remember the moments associated to those songs. But I can see also a lot of teenagers, young people, because they are sons and daughters of the people of my age. So they listen to my songs when I when they were children. Uh, it's incredible. It's a big satisfaction. I'm very proud of it. Very happy about it. Yeah, great answer. It um, yeah, I was just a kid when your stuff with 
Lady Violet, Wild Side, and the Siphon Group um, came out. So, of course, I couldn't go to the clubs when they were actually fun to go to. So, <laughs> Dance Dance Revolution and um, Napster and um, other um, music sites were my sources of dance music. Yes, of course, you were too young. But now you can dance uh, and listen to them where wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, but I always um borrow someone's boombox or aux cord and ask if I could play um dance music, and they said of course, and then they uh -huh. jokingly asked me, "How can you still listen to this stuff? There's too much going on. You need to relax." <laughs> no, really. Yeah, but the music now is not so fun. Oh, for sure. No. <laughs> Question um twenty five. Would you be down to sing your hits from Dance Dance Revolution for a Bimani and Dance Mania tour? I'd love, I'd love to be there and sing them. You have to write down which songs because, as you know, I can't remember. Remember, but I would love. It would be a dream, of course. Oh, for sure, and I most certainly will. Question 26. How much fun did you have singing over dance beats? A lot of fun. A lot of fun because they give you the opportunity to free your voice, free your mind, free your, your personality. It's true that uh, every time I sing in a studio, I have to follow some rules, of course, and follow the directions of uh, the producer, the DJ. But uh, I can also put something mine in there. And so it, it's very, it's very fun. It's very satisfying. So I, I like it very, very much, very, very much. That's the reason why I never stopped singing and dance music. So great answer um um question 27 your favorite song that you have sung it could be either lady violet or something um you made you wrote yourself or or anything that you made in your lifetime uh I, to be honest i can't choose uh, because uh, as, as regard dance music my favorite song is uh, the song that I, I prefer to sing of course is uh, Talk To Me uh, the project was DR and the song was Talk To Me cause I, 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 baby. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember it yes and I that do. was the only uh, was the only song where I gave my voice but also my face and you can find a video clip on YouTube and it's me this is the only time that I gave also my image to a dance project and I and the reason why I gave my my face is that I loved the song so this is my favorite song I think then uh, of course I have all... yeah oh it's only <laughs> Oh. I, I I have also many other song that I, songs that I like to sing, songs of mine that I wrote by myself, but are uh, the, the style is very, very different. Something more acoustic, uh, more uh, uh, in Italian. So uh, I, it, it's useful that I tell you the titles because you don't know them, of course. But Let's stay on Talk To Me by Dear. Great answer. And that is definitely a great song. What is your favorite song to sing live? The favorite song to sing live when I do my, my, my shows, I have to sing all the songs, most successful songs I sang in the 90s. And the one that I prefer to sing is uh, Zombie. From Cranberries, the cover, dance cover, and now recently I attach it to WhatsApp. And now I say, hey, yeah, 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 by yeah. DJ Miko, yeah. Yes. So these are two songs are my favorite songs to sing live. Uh, 
in my shows because they give me so much energy and all the people that sing with me, uh, it's incredible. I love it. Great answer. Um, how would you um describe the feeling being on stage as a singer? It's something I I love so much uh, because you feel that energy uh, and, and that relationship between you and your audience. Uh, it's something that I think you can't uh, feel anywhere else. Uh, and I could not live without it. Without it. During the COVID, uh, we were in lockdown yes. in Italy for almost two years. It was incredibly hard incredibly hard yes uh, so that that feeling is uh, is so um, energizing uh, yeah it, it was life it was terrible i never want to live through that again no 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 one i think no one <laughs> How does it feel to make your mark in the dance community? Very proud. I'm very, very proud. I feel important. <laughs> That's something that, you know, make you feel, uh, make you walk tall. And uh, yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm very happy about it. I, I didn't. I didn't think at that time, uh, 20 years ago, I, I never guessed that everything would turn this way now. And uh, I, I can't say that I am famous, but I feel, I feel famous now <laughs> because people who love this music, my music, uh, and think that I, that I did something good. So... Uh, I, I I feel proud. I feel proud and grateful, great, of course. Great, great answer. Yeah. And, um, last question. Tell me a memorable studio session. <laughs> yeah, here I I I can't choose really, but probably uh, one of the most incredible was uh, at Siphon Studio with. Uh, uh, Fabio Turatti, that was one of the producers, and I went there to sing uh, an entire album of cover by Celine Dion. That is one of my favorite singers, but it is also so hard to sing. So oh, yes. I spent all my day there from 8 a.m. until... Uh, I don't know. Now it was a night when we finished this album because it was uh, soloist vocals and all the background vocals, and you have to do it until it sounds perfect. It was memorable because, uh, as I as I said, I love Celine Dion so much <laughs> that the He's result at the end uh, made me very very satisfied and proud, and I. I went out from the studio very very tired but happy <laughs> awesome it was amazing interviewing you i will send you all the songs that you've sung with all those amazing aliases and you, you can please send me of natalie arts's email so i can oh, interview you and give you a shout out that would be amazing Ciao. Of course, I'll do. Ciao. Thank you so much. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.